Hi everyone, my name is Amit Gross and today we're going to talk about the difference between machine learning and deep learning. So as you can see in this diagram, deep learning is a subset of machine learning, which is a subset of artificial intelligence. So what is the difference? Scientists usually define this difference as the way we implement the learning techniques, we implement the learning architecture and the learning algorithms. So machine learning usually learns from the past and the present by passively learning the data. And AI, for example, learns by interaction with the environment. So let's take, for example, robots. While we interact with the environment, we're changing the environment, and then we can learn accordingly and change our behavior in order to maximize something or minimize something. Here, for example, we can see some simple diagram of what is AI. Usually there are agent or agents involved in, in, in some we can, we can describe it as a game. When we want to uh, maximize uh, the gain, and usually there is some kind of reward and there are states and we do our actions according to what we change in the environment, we change, we're changing by our actions, the environment and getting the rewards accordingly. So this is, uh, AI usually involves in today reinforcement learning. Uh, when we use task to maximize the gain, they usually done via some uh, multi-arm bandit strategy to maximize the expected gains. So let's uh, go back to deep learning and machine learning. So let's take an example uh, where we want to identify uh, a brown poodle in an image or sets of images. So in, in, in a classic machine learning, what we would do is extract the features manually. What are features? Those are things, uh, little algorithms that can uh, generate some insights about, about what, what a brown poodle in this example is. So let's take, for example, uh, uh, the colors of the pixels and let's try to um, describe which kind of brown spectrum uh, a brown poodle looks like. Um, we can also take, for example, pixels that can describe curly hair. And we can also take the contour and calculate the surface size of a poodle to see its size. Okay, those are features and we can generate many features. Those are small algorithms that eventually will combine all the features together into one optimization algorithms. And, and it, via, via this algorithm, we can describe some mathematical function when we want to uh, uh, maximize or minimize uh, uh, this function in order to, to, to see and to determine uh, during our prediction phase, our inference phase, uh, what the chance that this is, this picture actually uh, has brown poodle in it. So one, one of the uh, techniques for optimization is using neural networks. And neural networks are, are, are algorithms that we have about, uh, I, I think from the 50s. And, and we've started from a simple neural networks and today they are evolving quite fast. And, and we can use neural networks in machine learning. And, we can uh, use those networks in order to describe some complex functions, complex mathematical function when, again, we want, usually we want to optimize something uh, 
uh, we, we describe some loss function or cost function. And this mathematical function, function will, will eventually uh, learn by changing its parameters or what we call hyperparameters uh, in order to uh, generate some brain that will be able to understand these inputs and predict if the output or the target that we're looking for is actually there. Uh, so a neural network, as you can see in this, this diagram, is, is uh, consists from multiple neurons or perceptrons. Those perceptrons are connected to other perceptrons. So we have an input layer. This is the first layer, the, the green uh, neurons. And we have some hidden layer. There can be multiple hidden layers. Uh, and, and we connect those new, new neurons um, by edges that has some weights. And we calculate those weights in, in many ways. And we can also inject some bias to each neuron. And those weights are calculated uh, via some activation function. You can see some of the functions here below. Uh, on the left. So sigmoid, for example, is one function. And today we use usually uh, ReLU, it's more rectified functions uh, that help us to, to resolve some of the problems that neural networks has. And eventually we have the output layer, target layer. Here we can see one uh, uh, specific target neuron because we only want to determine if there is a brown poodle or not in a specific picture. So eventually all those weights are summed together. And, and as I mentioned, this neural network uh, is also part of machine learning. So in deep learning, what we do is usually concatenate uh, many layers in a neural network that consist a deep learning neural network, or we can even uh, concatenate many networks one after the other. There are a lot of uh, algorithms and architectures of how uh, we concatenate those layers together. Uh, it can be, uh, we can work on, on time series with some uh, memory that we emphasize via some neural network like uh, long short uh, terms uh, uh, memory networks and and the more deep the network is uh, its its ability to learn more complex features is it's better because eventually the mathematical functions are getting more and more complex and we want to get into some global, minimum or global maximum depends how you look at the data and 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 find if there is really something that we're looking for um, so here for example in deep neural network what we actually do is we use a convolutional neural networks uh, which are um, neural network that has some convolutional layers. Those are 3D uh, neural networks that are able to learn complex multi-channels data. For example, if we take a picture, so picture has many channels. It has uh, RGB or uh, HUV, depends on, on which channels you take from the picture itself. And then we can generate some uh, kernels or matrices, and we can uh, move them across those, this image to uh, extract some feature, some complex feature that is really hard to do manually like in, in a classic machine learning. So this way, the deep learning can learn a lot of features. And those features eventually, as in regular neural networks, will move from layer to layer to layer to layer uh, 
generating some feature maps and we will do some subsampling in order to reduce the data uh, to avoid some complex uh, problems that we have uh, like the curse of dimensionality and other problematic stuff that we are dealing with uh, in those architectures. So this is basically uh, the difference that the manual learning of the features or uh, the automatic learning of the features via complex uh, neural networks. And those are usually used in uh, visual objects or, or voice or, or natural language processing. Uh, but today they're implemented uh, into many, many other domains as well, like time series, financial data, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you.